Happy Halloween to those who celebrate it. Happy Sunday evening to a good chunk of Australia, am I right? Anyway, so I've had Castlevania on the mind lately. Tis the season, of course. But also, Castlevania is immensely relevant right now. Between the awesome Netflix show and the recently released Advanced Collection, I would have liked to get a video out comparing Castlevania Lords of Shadow Mirror of Fate to Metroid Dread since they share a developer. But I physically can't make myself sit on my desk to record a playthrough of it. So, instead, you get this. This is Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. Or is it? No, yeah, it is. But you've probably noticed that it isn't running on a Nintendo DS. Nope, this is the mobile phone version, released for the J2ME platform that most feature phones in most parts of the world use, and in fact still use to this day. This is one of those things that's so hard to track down these days, a lot of people didn't even know this version of the game existed, but it does. I fished it off my old phone's SD card recently, along with some other interesting stuff. Revisiting Dawn of Sorrow though, I realised that there's actually quite a lot to talk about here. For specifics, this is the 240x320 version of the game, as that's the kind of phone I had back then. I actually played it on one of these, a Nokia 6300. Wonderful little thing. This version also appears to be optimized for certain Nokia devices, but I'm not sure how that all works. And as far as J2ME games go, this is actually pretty impressive. It was designed for higher end handsets, so it runs smoothly and even controls pretty well. It's rare that a J2ME game actually supports multiple button presses at once. Getting it running was certainly a challenge. J2ME emulators or environments are sort of a mess and usually display worse performance than real hardware. I don't have a working J2ME device lying around, but I don't have the charger for it, so that's out. The game works in K emulator, but runs slower than it should and has some severe graphical glitches, and the game slows to a crawl whenever there's any transparency effects on screen, such as text boxes and screen transitions. I tried other methods and ultimately settled on using the somewhat dated but surprisingly compatible PSP KVM emulator, running through PPSSPP. Here it ran pretty much flawlessly with no slowdown, though the MIDI sound font this emulator uses is awful, so I won't be using the audio from that recording. Still, this is basically Dawn of Sorrow running on a PSP. What a concept, huh? Anyway, the footage is good enough for illustration purposes. You want to know how it compares to the DS original, right? The j 2 me game is actually significantly different from the DS original. There's the usual changes you'd expect, like reduced audio and graphics, but it turns out they heavily reworked the game too. The game's intro was significantly abridged. Several story beats are simplified, with Yoko taking on a smaller role and Hammer being missing entirely. Synthesis is retained, but the item shop is removed in the J2ME version. The variety in weapons, gear, and souls seems to be reduced in the J2ME version too. The map layout is also significantly different, with many rooms being cut or consolidated. The positioning of key areas is more or less the same, there's just a lot less to explore. You've also probably noticed by now that enemy variety is significantly reduced. Naturally, the DS version is going to be the better way to play this game, but I still had a lot of fun playing the j 2 me version, to the point that I had to actively stop myself from playing so I wouldn't sink hours into it. Even though it's downgraded and cut down, the j 2 me version is still impressive for the platform. It plays smoothly and still feels just like you'd expect a Castlevania game to. One interesting thing is how this J2ME version handles the touchscreen elements of the original game. Since the devices this particular version was made for don't support touch, when it comes to using magic seals to open doors or vanquish bosses, it actually maps the point on the magic seal to the keypad. Not only is this a pretty clever use of the hardware, but it also answers the biggest hurdle in getting this game re-released. So, at the time of this video, we just recently got the Castlevania Advance Collection, which contains all three GBA games. Circle of the Moon, Harmony of Dissonance, and Aria of Sorrow. Oh, and the SNES title, Vampire's Kiss, too. Known as Akumajo Dracula Double Cross in Japan, and I think that's all the countries, right? Anyway, naturally the next step is a dual collection of some sort, with the three Nintendo DS entries. 
As we all know, there's a lot of hurdles that come with bringing DS games forward to the new platforms. Translating the dual screen user interface and in some cases gameplay gets tricky. Not to mention that fast and accurate DS emulation is actually a lot more difficult than you'd think. Due to the system's unique hardware configuration, the Mega Man Zero ZX Legacy Collection actually uses native code rather than emulation, to my knowledge. Thankfully, the Castlevania games are mostly relegated to one screen, with the bottom screen mostly being dedicated to gameplay and the top screen showing helpful game info. It wouldn't be too difficult to rework things to fit one screen, or even just do the classic one big screen, one small screen approach. If they rebuilt the games instead of using emulation, updating the UI is certainly possible. The touch elements of Dawn of Sorrow in particular present a serious usability challenge, but the J2ME version of the game shows just one of many ways that can be done on a device without touch inputs. Of course, there's also ROM hacks for the original game that address this, but still, it's an interesting contribution to that conversation. In any case, I'd like to hope it's something they attempt someday. Maybe they could bundle in the X68000 entry as the fourth bonus game. Or Castlevania HD, Harmony of Despair with Couch Co-op and all the DLC. That'd be cool. It's actually kind of funny. I had both Portrait of Ruin and Order of Ecclesia fairly close to release, but I didn't have Dawn of Sorrow at the time. In fact, the J2ME version was my first and, until recording the footage for this video, only exposure to it. I really need to go back and play both Aria and Dawn properly sometime. DS Dawn of Sorrow, not... yeah. Well, if a Castlevania DS collection is perhaps too tricky, may I suggest, completely unironically, a collection of the N64 and PS2 games. Come on, Castlevania N64 is actually a way more interesting game than people give it credit for. Don't look at me like that, you know I'm right. Castlevania, Castlevania, na 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 Subscribe.